family, and this is just the, the green version of it. Um, I'm not super excited about this sort of early hazing that's coming out, the sort of blue on the surface there, because I was running oxidizing. Um, this back end, someone had burnt off in reduction, so what I'm going to try to do is basically burn this back to blue without any silver deposit on the surface, and then I'm going to dot box it. So your second one is dot box with uh, color base. So not working on clear, working on color, and then utilizing clear to make your dots, and then reducing in the end to bring out the oxide, the silver to the surface of the, the color base, so that you get the variation um, and the, the original color, which you're gonna see what that looks like here in a second. Originally I had a color palette picked out there, but then I realized I just want the lesson to focus more on how clear can function for you in a, a positive capacity with these color changing colors. So I'm going to just gather this back, make sure you're oxidizing so you don't get any oxides depositing on the surface. Basically if you stay oxidizing as they, um, the molecules get excited, they'll try to come up to the surface but the oxidation and the heat and the velocity will burn them off of the surface and it'll maintain uh, the purity of the color without any um, striking or coloration or you know, oxide deposit. So I can see if I'm actually running oxidizing enough by looking for that haze on the surface. If you don't know what I'm talking about, um, once you start heating up, you'll see it just kind of looks like a little film. Um, almost dirty. And that's the, what you're trying to burn off. So if you work in reduction, and you get it or too neutral and it starts depositing on the surface there's a point where you can actually get it to go away but then there's a point also where you've uh, worked it too long and it's stuck to the surface and you can't burn it off so the part where I welded onto my clear whoever worked it previously it was really heavily caked on there and it's not totally letting go so that part of this is not going to reveal exactly what I wanted to show you but Okay, so I'm just drawing that back out a little bit, giving me a little more surface area. I'll let that set up and then I'm going to just dot along this in some kind of organized fashion. So I have a small rod, small flame. <clears throat> Make sure you're dotting in oxidation too. And then I'm working underneath my flame guide to keep my pendant warm and I'm working over the top with my drawing glass, my drawing rod. <clears throat> so you don't have to be super, uh, you don't have to do the exact same dot box pattern I'm doing here. You can come up with whatever thing is more exciting to you, but Try to, I guess, you know, I'd encourage you to work for symmetry to just learn how to apply and control uh, your dot size and placement. It's always easy to do some variation of what's intended if you know how to do the thing originally. So for example, like when I was in an early drawing class, I was encouraged not to abstract anything until I actually knew the form in reality. So if you know how a tree with leaves looks, it's easy to start abstracting that, but if you never know what it looks like to begin with, you're referencing your imagination instead of reality. So sometimes that abstraction won't resonate with anyone because it's only your vision that it makes sense to. <laughs> wow, that was, I didn't think that was that deep. But that <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to add a couple dots on top of this because this is also going to strike uh, just on top of the clear, and then um, I'll try to get some of that oxide out to the surface. So working 
uh, slightly, and I'll maybe do it every other place. Okay, so I think that that's all. All right, so now I'm gonna melt that in. <clears throat> Came out of the flame while making my adjustment. I wanna work these down in the back so I don't burn the most protruding parts of my dot work. And I want it to soften and round. I want it to do it slowly so that I don't bleed my dot work too much. If you come onto it really fast, uh, sometimes it can move in ways that you're not interested. So you can see how those dots are working to be round first and then as the color underneath it, which is going to take longer to get hot because it's got all that metal in it, as that starts to get hot, it's going to draw down those dots into the color and allow it to become all one. Right there looks pretty cool actually, like, you know. Kind of like that. I can see I'm getting a little haze, so I bump up my oxygen to burn that off. I don't want it right now. If I work in that same flame by the end, I'm going to be muddy and gray. So I've got to keep it um, oxidized enough that I'm not getting a film until I actually want it. So does your distance from the flame, distance from where the flame is coming out of? Uh, affect how the oxygen reacts with your piece? Like if you're further back in the flame, are you more likely to get muddy than if you're closer to the oxygen? Um, actually, the well, if you're an oxidizing, <coughs> no, if you're an oxidizing, you're, you're pretty safe. If you're, uh, like the, I've noticed more of a reaction with my flame up here, no matter what than in the back. Does that answer? Yeah. Okay, so there's my, I'm gonna let this die off a little bit, uh, the heat color die off a little bit. So what we should be able to see is that underneath the clear dots I've got, um, well a different color in this case, I can still see it's actually got some silver. And then the green, amber, purple around it is holding a, a much darker blue. But this backside where it was already reduced has got a silver haze on it, which I don't really like. This is what I wanted the whole thing to be, is this dark blue. So I would have been better to have wiped the area that was heavily reduced already, gotten rid of it. But that was me being miserly because I didn't want to waste the color. Uh, that I should have. Okay, so I've got that, um, my dots separating the space, and now basically I'm just going to reduce it in order to bring. Uh, first, I'll see actually if I, you know, I don't know this color as well as the amber purples, but the amber purples like to be incubated in order to bring out the purples in a pretty neutral flame and in the back of it. Remember how we were striking the reds yesterday? Mm -hmm. About the same thing. Way in the back. Don't get it hot. Uh, let it kind of soak just at the back end. So not really bringing any heat color into it, just letting it be warm. Now it looks like it's getting me darker blue. And it's striking my amber purple dots that I put on the top right now. Let me pass that around in this state. That's kind of the common reaction on the amber purples in the triple passions. It's like, because that amount.